There was a purpose for them. It wasn't just the fact that the God wanted to speak again to Moses. He wanted Moses to have them in writing again. And so in verse number two, he said it, and I will write on the tables the words that were in the first. Verse three said, and I made an ark of shittim wood and hewn two tables of stone like unto the first. And went up into the mount, having the two tables in my hand. And he wrote on the tables, according to the first writing, the Ten Commandments. God wrote it again. What is the responsibility that we have is to provide it again. That's what we're doing. We're providing it again. What we're doing is producing it again. What we're doing is we have it. So we're producing it for someone else to have. That's all we're doing. We're providing it for them. And what God said to Moses is, you come up, and he writes it down. So in verse number four, he wrote on the tables according to the first writing, the Ten Commandments, which the Lord spake unto you in the mount out of the midst of the fire in the day of the assembly. And the Lord gave them unto me, and I turned myself and came down from the mount. Now, what's he going to do this time? Last time, he heard the dancing, he heard the music, and he throws them down out of his own uh, uh, heat of his own anger. What happens this time? He said, I turned myself and came down from the mount to put the tables in the ark which I had made. And I marked this little phrase, and there they be. And there they be. You know why? Because there was a need for them later. In Nehemiah chapter number 8, the Bible says, When they called for Ezra to bring the book of the law of Moses. What was it? It was that which God had provided. And what God was saying is, you, you go get it. You know where it's at. I gave it to you. You know where to put it. You put it in the ark. You put it for safekeeping. When did we give it away? When did we decide as a people to let the world provide it instead of the church provide it? Did not God choose a people to provide his word? He chose a people to provide it. He chose a people to proclaim it. He charged, he gave, he had a whole, he had a whole tribe that was responsible for it. May I suggest to you then what happened is someplace along the way, we gave it away. And somebody else took it for production. For money. They chose to do it for that reason. You see, we don't print at First Baptist Church. Bearing press seed doesn't exist to provide the scripture cheaper. It's to provide the scripture the way God desired his scripture to be provided. Because God chose the people of the Old Testament, and that people is Israel. And we always talk about Israel being God's chosen people of the Old Testament. Who's God's chosen people of the New Testament? The church. Then why would we not have the same responsibility that God's people of the Old Testament have? If we want to use them for all the other illustrations, why don't we use them for this one? So if they had the responsibility in the Old Testament of the Scripture, then why don't we, as God's people, have the responsibility in the New Testament? So I simply suggest to you that there was a need for it being written. Go with me, if you would, to 1 John. Go with me to 1 John chapter number 1. In 1 John chapter number 1. We don't print the scripture because the scripture, we can print it cheaper. Our desire is to print the scripture so those who don't have it can have it. That's our desire. We print the scripture so they can have it. In 1 John chapter number 1. Now we know in John 1.1, 1, 1, John's writing, five of them. The Gospel of John. Three, three books of John and the book of Revelation. Now, when you study all of them out, they somewhat all start about the same way. And you know what that is? Talking about the Word. In the beginning was the Word. Word was with God, and the Word was God. In verse 12 of chapter of John 1, it says, And he was made flesh and dwelt among us. Now, in 1 John chapter 1, he goes on, and John says, That which was from the beginning which was what? The word, John 1, 1. He said, that which was from the beginning, we've heard, we've seen with our eyes, we have looked upon, our hands have handled, and who is it? He's the word of life. 
for the life was manifest, which is Christ. He said, we see, we saw it, we seen it, and bear witness and show uh, unto you the eternal life which was with the Father and was manifest unto us. John's giving firsthand testimony. John's saying, I'm here because I saw him and I'm testifying of him. I handled him, I saw him, I heard him. I'm testifying. He says in verse 3, that which we have seen and heard uh, declare we unto you. That ye, all may all, that ye also may have fellowship with us. I just simply want to take out of verse 3, that which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you. Go with me over just a couple of pages to Revelation chapter number 1. In Revelation chapter number 1, it says there, of course, the revelation of Jesus Christ, verse 1, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass, and he sent and signified it by the angel unto his servant, whom? John. So John's giving testimony. What's he giving testimony? He said, I'm bearing record of the what? Word of God. John 1, 1. 1 John 1, 1. I'm giving record of the word of God. I'm giving you record of the word of God. Now, that was great. He was giving it to them verbally. He was speaking it to them. John, what's he speaking? He's speaking what he saw and what he heard. Look at verse number 12. John said, and I turned to see. See who? See the voice, which, of course, was Christ. In verse number 17, and when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. Now, I want you to do that one more thought and go to verse number 19. What does he say? Right. Go back to 1 John chapter number 1. And what does God say? Verse 4. And these things write. Look in chapter 2 and verse 1. My little children, these things write. Look in verse number 9. Or, uh, verse number 7, brethren, I write. Look in verse number 8, he said again a new commandment, I write. Look in verse 12, he said I write. Verse 13, I write. The middle of the verse, I write unto you. The end of the verse, I write unto you. Verse 14, I have written unto you. In the middle of verse 14, I have written unto you. In verse 21, I have not written unto you because you know not the truth. He's writing to them the truth. Verse number 26, 26 says, These things have I written. Why did Moses write? Because God told him to. Why did John write? God told him to. God wanted a written word provided. Why does the church write? Because we have a command to. We've been told to. It's our responsibility to provide it. We have it. Provide it to those who don't. We're going to go preach to them. We're going to be the Lord's messenger. Great. Take the message. Take the message. You say, well, I got the message. I got it in my heart. Yeah, I know. I got it in my heart, too, but I need it written for them. Why? Because I need to go to it every day. What did you do when you got up this morning? You went to the Word of God. You went to the written Word of God. What if you didn't have it? If you wouldn't have had it to get up to this morning, if you'd go to church and didn't have it, well, wait a minute, there's a whole lot of the world they don't have it. They don't have it. So who's going to be responsible? We'll let the world provide it for the world? They will at a cost. They will if you pay for it. They will if they can make money from it. But is that the purpose? Is that what God was saying when he spoke to Moses, when he spoke to John, when he told him to write? No. It was to be provided to the people. So bearing precious seed, Milford exists to provide the word of God to the world. That's what our, that's what our responsibility is. Our desire and our goal is to print it to anyone who does not have it at no cost. Now, no cost is like saying salvation didn't cost. Didn't cost me anything. It cost him everything. There's always a cost. So the cost then becomes ours who have to those who have not. So as a ministry, we're simply asking and wanting folks to be involved in what is 
their responsibility, our responsibility. God's just given us the opportunity to be involved in it, just as every other church should be involved in it. And so together we can accomplish the task of reaching this world with the gospel, of them giving it. Now, bearing precious seed is... Um, Bearing Precious Seed is 40 years old at First Baptist Church Milford. There are multiple Bearing Precious Seeds. You say, well, I've had a missionary in my church, and he was a Bearing Precious Seed missionary. That's very possible, and that's very true. Bearing Precious Seed Milford is a local church ministry out of First Baptist Church. There are Bearing Precious Seed ministries out of other independent local churches as well. They're taking their responsibility in the printing. We're taking our responsibility in the printing. So as a ministry, we're a ministry out of the local church because the church is responsible for getting the word to the world, not a ministry. No more than the world is, the church is. So the ministry then should be the church. So what is the importance of the church in the ministry? The ministry doesn't exist only but for an arm or an outreach of the church. Every ministry in your church is an outreach of your church. It's not taking the place of the church. This doesn't take the place of the church's responsibility. This is the church's means by which to attain its responsibility. Now, Bearing Precious Seed has some areas in it you might have heard. Somebody might have talked to you about Bearing Precious Seed. They talked to you about seed line ministry. It's a ministry within Bearing Precious Seed that has a responsibility and that responsibility specifically is to get other churches to get their hands on the word of God. That's a part of, that's a division of, a sector of. Why? Because that's part of our responsibility. You know, the Great Commission, I, I wrote down last night, and I don't know why, but since, you know, sometimes the simplest things are the things that get you. Uh, you know, he's talking about the Great Commission last night, and the Great Commission is what? It's threefold, right? Great Commission is Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and the uttermost. That's the way we talk about it. We talk about in the book of Acts, it's divided into three sections. Chapters 1 through 7 are Jerusalem. Chapters 8 through 12 are Judea and Samaria. Chapters 13 through 28 are the uttermost. And it hit me last night as I was thinking about that while the preaching was going on. You know how much time God spent on the uttermost then? If God spent 13 through 28 on the uttermost, the sad part is we spend most of our time in Jerusalem. We spend most of our time in the closest thing's proximity to us. When in reality, even in writing the Bible, God spent more time on the uttermost. We spend less time on the uttermost. We spend more money on Jerusalem and less money on the uttermost. So we give the least effort to what God gave the greatest amount of time to. 13 in Acts, just as an example, 13 through 28. He gave more towards the, reaching the uttermost in content of the book that was given to tell us about the church's responsibility to the Great Commission. But yet as a church, we spend all of our time often in Jerusalem. In our money in Jerusalem. So Bearing Precious Seed is a ministry that just is there to help us accomplish the task God's given to us as a church. And Bearing Precious Seed is an opportunity if you see your need of being involved in the Word of God, instead of you developing it all and doing all of it, we can partner together. So there's, there's, there's a ministry called Seed Line. Then that, you've heard, and Dr. Kane, of course, began a ministry called First Bible. First Bible, Dr. Kane began 10 years ago. And God's now brought it back under the auspice of bearing precious seed. And the reason is, is because it is an arm necessary to reach an area that needed, needs emphasis one ministry within Seedline reaches churches, local churches, to get involved. 
First Bible is reaching into the world to get the scripture that we need to print so that the churches can be involved in reaching the uttermost, the unreached people groups. It's the extension. It's that which is necessary to fulfill the task. We could just stay in Jerusalem, but we need to go to the uttermost. What is the uttermost? In essence, First Bible is the uttermost of bearing precious seed as the uttermost of Acts 1 is. It's the part that we, we have to reach out to. We have to go to. Now, where is it going to come from? Where did they get the missionaries? They got them from the church. Where should we get the word of God? From the church. From the church. My time is done. If I'm going to go eat, am I going to go to a place where I recognize and feel is clean in a right place to get food? Or do I go to find a place that's a dump and looks bad and is dirty and unclean to get my food? I want to suggest to you, why would we do less with the Bible? Why would we go to the world that's unclean to get the word of God when we can go to a place that is God's chosen place and God's chosen people to get the word of God? Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for your blessings. As in Christ's name, amen.